speaking about the TQFT for the ADO invariance of links. Also, 
uh, uncountable many different uh, representation with complex weight. In fact, there is one simple representation for X complex number. And they were used by uh, already uh, maybe in 95, something like this, by uh, Akutsu, Deguchi, and Otsuki to construct an environment of, uh, of selling. So, uh, amount of selling means an environment for, you can see this as a link with a line bundle with a flat connection. Or more simply, uh, you, you call out the component of the link by the non zero complex number. And what I want to, what I will uh, explain in this talk is how you can construct a three manifold environment from this uh, link environment in a similar way that you can construct the written object into a F environment of three manifold from the color of the mirror, and how you can derive the TQFT from it. What I want to talk today is uh, the, the, the next step in this work that would be to include all cyclic representation of UQSL to, to construct a uh, SL2C link invariant. And uh, I just say this is a work in progress with uh, Christian Blanchet, Lavangir, and Nikolai Rushnikin. And I just get some keyword for the, this uh, work in progress. But for this talk, I will be here. So here we, uh, I chose uh, for simplicity to take Q to be exponential IP over L, where L is a non integer in most of the talk. Uh, in fact, it can be any root of, almost any root of unity. But um, there are there won't be a simple calculation here because more than Q, what we want is an exponential map. It's not only Q that we choose, but it's logarithm that allows you to say what is Q to ZZ for an X complex number of Z. If you have a complex number of Z, you can define. We, we use the notation Q to ZZ to, def to, to define exponential I PZ divided by R. So if, for example, if I, uh, if I take um, Q equal exponential 2L plus 1 the i over L, it will not give the same, uh, the same theory because it's, it will not be the same exponential map. It's not only Q that we choose, but it's, it's logarithm. So why this is important? This is important because morally we will have this relation here. Okay, so the link invariant uh, defined by Akutsu, Deguchi, and Otsuki. When you have a link with uh, at least two components, it's uh, colored by complex number. It's uh, essentially, I say, a lower lower polynomial in the variable Q to the alpha e. So essentially, because you can have uh, some kind of uh, framing coefficient in front. But for a zero from not, it is a meromorphic function. which is in fact a rational function in Q to the alpha. And uh, its pole at integers uh, have a residue which has in fact the color Jones polynomial. So in some sense, the IDO function contains the color Jones polynomial as its residue. At least the evaluation of this color Jones polynomial at the root of unity. So this is true for the, uh, the small color of the Jones polynomials between uh, 0 and n. And for the, the Kashaev invariant, which is the, the, um, uh, the color yes, for the for the L color uh, L minus one color chose for your nulls, which is the Kashaev invariant, then it's a theorem of uh, Itoshi and Jun Murakami, and uh, the the Cache F invariant is the Jones pro color Jones polynomial uh, with the corresponding root of unity, and it's also the value of the IDO evaluated at uh, alpha equal zero for my uh, convention. So 
So the goal of this talk is to generalize the IDO invariant of link, then define the invariant three manifold invariant associated. So they will be invariant of compatible decorated three manifold, closed three manifold. So here M is a closed connected uh, compact three manifold. Um, T is a possibly anti colored ribbon graph inside. So your ribbon graph it is a graph second, so you uh, so the vertex are second to coupon and they are colored by some morphism of some kind of bit. And uh, it can be also uh, possibly a ribbon graph. And uh, omega is a cohomology class in the complement of T. So we can think of omega as a monodromy of a flat connection on And then to, I, will, uh, I will finish by uh, explaining how we, we can extend this environment to a TQFT for, the, for a special category of decorated cobordisms. So I list several properties of this environment. So first, the, the, this construction is very general. It works for any simple D algebra and uh, even for simply super algebra uh, except one. It was shown recently by uh, It's a series of environments for each root of unity. So for L equal to, so L is not the level, it's the order of the root of unity. Or it's a half the order of the root of unity. And so it corresponds to level zero. So the level zero environment is just the abelian, a refinement of abelian by master torsion, no ambiguity. So, gives a finite dimensional representation of the mapping class group and uh, they are very different from the witten rushkin toriev representation of the mapping class group in the following sense. For the, in the witten rushkin toriev case, we know that the, the image of the ten twist into such a representation are finite order elements. So you, the, I don't know if it is a conjecture that the kernel of the the kernel of this representation is generated by the power of the dent twist. At least it contains the subgroup generated by the health power of the dent twist. Here we don't have something like this. Here the, the, the image of the dent twist are more like a transvection. So we, we, we have no idea of uh, if there is element in the kernel of this representation. And this is an important point because it is not known if the mapping class group is a linear group. It also gives some uh, representation of the Kaufman bracket scan algebra because we we are considering a three manifold in which the link can be colored by the complex weight representation, but also by the Kaufman representation. And the Kaufman representation is the representation that satisfies the, the Kaufman scan relation, and it gives the possibility to to make acting the Kaufman bracket scan algebra on the TQFT of the surface. And so it's not it's a natural generalization of the ADO environment for link in three manifolds. So we will explain a little more how after. And in particular, I as the, the value of uh, the ADO environment for alpha equal zero is the Kashaev invariant. It also gives a gener uh, natural generalization of the Kashaev environment for link in three manifolds. So it gives also the TQFT for the Kashaev invariant. It's interesting to look at the asymptotic of this TQFT. And it gives again new volume conjecture. We are having so many uh, during this uh, work that I, I won't give any, but I will just give some results. So we, there is another generalization of the volume conjecture. I don't write it, but I give two cases where it has been proven for, for the infinite class of hyperbolic link in S2 cross S1. So this, this infinite class of, uh, oh sorry, it's a, uh, I forgot about it's fundamental hyperbolic links. It's a, oh yes, no, it's written here. The, there are links defined by uh, Francesco Costantino to whom they are universal in the, uh, in the way that any three manifold is obtained by surgery on this link, it can be obtained 
by surgery on this link. And for 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 this link, in fact, the the, the volume of the complement is very simple. It's just a multiple of the volume of uh, the ideal uh, of the So for this infinite uh, class of link, we we prove that. Uh, the three manifold invariant I'm going to describe uh, as an exponential rule uh, as fast as uh, the hyperbolic volume of the complement of the, of the link. And also, the, the, the conjecture is, is proved uh, in all cases where it is proven in S3. So it's not an empty statement because, uh, uh, as was said uh, this morning, the, the diagram you choose to prove the polling conjecture is important. And here with this theorem we we give a new set of diagrams with surgery components. So you can for example present the figure eight knot as an unknot with two surgery and it gives you a new diagram to prove the surgery the polling conjecture. Okay, so I start with the link invariant. So to revisit the invariant defined by Akutsu uh, Dekuchi Otsuki. So it was defined using color grade group representation, and uh, uh, I will work with uh, the Reshitik in Turayev point of view, which is a functor from a cate category. So very generally speaking, some category of representation of quantum group are rebound categories, which means that there is grading, uh, which is uh, an isomorphism between U tensor V and V tensor U. And uh, you have a good duality, two side duality, pivotal structure, and compatibility between the two. And when you have this, when you are in this category, you, you, you can use the Penrose graphical calculus to make some computation into this category. diagram to represent morphism between representation. Just a strand like this will represent the identity of V. The, the duality morphism, this will represent some morphism called the evaluation, co-evaluation. So this is a morphism from uh, V star tensor V to C. This is a morphism from C so this is uh, this represents the morphism that is reading from u tensor v to v tensor u, and it is given by the flip and the action of the air matrix. When you want to tensor two morphism, you just tag them uh, on one on the left and the other. And when you want to compose them, you put them one on the top of the other and you close the ends. And doing this, you are drawing some diagram on the, on the plane that represents morphisms. And the Rashidikin and Turayev formalized this construction by saying that you have, that, uh, saying that in fact this little diagram that you draw on your black on your background represents a functor for color tangle to the category C. So you, you can think, in fact, of this little diagram as the projection of some spatial ribbon graph. So here I write, if you have a coupon, which is just a box with a morphism from here, it represents the morphism, the associated morphism from Every time you draw a diagram, you compute some composition of linear map, in fact. <coughs> and on one side, and on the other side, you represent the projection of a spatial ribbon graph whose uh, edge are colored by representation by module of the category, and whose coupon are colored by morphism of the category. So one case is interesting. It is a case of a long knot 
when you have two open, uh, when you have uh, one open strand, or more generally of a one-one tangle or of a one-one graph, then in this case, what you compute is a, what you get is an endomorphism. The graphical calculus gives you an endomorphism of the object P. And if you close this one-one tangle, what you get is the categorical trace of this endomorphism. And categori categorical trace is uh, the analogous of the usual trace of matrix. So for control groups, the categorical trace of the morphism C is the usual trace in the vector space of the action of K to the so for us with 1 minus L times F. This is what we call the pivotal element. This is this element that gives the two sides the duality. Okay, so the example, the ribbon category I will use is uh, the category of uh, representation of the unroll quantum group. So this is the version of the quantum group I will use. So it's a version when we add, we, when we have two elements, H and K, K that morally are li linked by these things, but this is not an algebraic relation. So we don't put this as in the presentation. So I consider the presentation where H and K, K are just independent generators. So with the usual uh, ration for UQSL2 and the co-product given here. But in the representation, is it possible that uh, K not equal to so QH? After, so I don't, I don't look at all the representations. I want, I want to have this ration, but this is not a, an algebraic relation. If you don't have it, so just the difference is some simple element. Uh, then it's not ready. I need, ready. I need, I need, I need this relation to have the braiding. So to have a braided category, I only loop representation where this is true. This makes sense in the representation because when, when I am in a representation, H and K are matrices and I know what is the exponential of matrices. So I have a preferred topology in finite dimensional vector space. So I only loop representation when where this is true. And this is what I call the category of weight modules. So weight modules will mean that H at diagonally, uh, there is no nipotent part in the operator H, so, and the eigenvalues are the weight. K is equal to Q to the H, and uh, I will work with E to the L and F to the L equal to zero. Sorry. And the, so I will only have a nipotent representation. And this category is ribbon, where the grading is given by the action of the truncated linear matrix, which is given by uh, the action of this, uh, this operator on the models. Okay, so for the same reason, Q to the H on storage is well defined, because I know what is, on a, on a representation of the on roll control group, I know what is the action of H, so I know what is the action of Q to the H on storage, it's just the exponential of the matrix. And, uh, one point is that uh, it's a truncated air matrix because the uh, H adic air matrix, the original air matrix of Greenfield, is uh, uh, the sum is going from 0 to the infinity. But if you do this, then you see that you have a denominator that vanishes at root infinity. Okay. So this is a ribbon category. So here are some pictures of these categories. So in fact, when you have a representation, uh, it can be, it is not necessarily simple, but you can split your representation into a direct sum of homogeneous representation. And what is an homogeneous representation? It's a representation in which all the weights are congruent modul modulo 2. They have the same weight mod. So this gives you a grading of the category which means, when I write this, it means that any object here is a direct sum of object in these uh, subcategories. And uh, this grading is compatible with the tensor product. This is due, due to the co-product stru uh, structure in the alpha algebra. So you have a C alpha bar tensor C beta bar that goes in the sum. Yeah. The degree of two representation is additive. Okay, then the simple module of C 
they are, I have already said, but they are uh, in bijection with the complex numbers. And uh, most of them are called typical, they are the V alpha, where alpha belongs to this set of complex numbers where you are, where you are removed all the integer except, sorry, it's LZ. Okay, and for uh, for alpha bar not zero or one, all modules. In fact, if the weights are not integral, then all the modules are projective and semi-simple. So it means that every uh, every time you you have some module which is a V alpha, then it will split. It will be a direct sum of the modules. So the, the representation are very simple. They are just direct sum of this block. The problem is that the for any projective in this category, the categorical trace is zero. So if you take any morphism in this category between project, uh, a longer morphism of a projective, and you do this categorical trace, then it is zero. So because of what I said before, it means that any closed graph with a projective color on an edge will evaluate to zero. If you remember, when you have a one-one graph, it will send to another morphism of P. And when I close it, the scalar I get is a categorical trace. So if the categorical trace is zero, then uh, the graphical calculus will always give zero for closed graph. So this, to solve this problem, there is a we discovered uh, the existence of a uh, technology which is the notion of a modified trace on an IDO in a, in a ribbon category. So here C is a ribbon category. And first we define what is an IDO in a ribbon category. So an IDO is a full subcategory which is stable by retract. So it means the retract is just a direct sum. So if you have a, an object in the IDO and you take a direct sum of it, it's also in the IDO. And it's also absorbing for the tensor product, it means that if you take the tensor product of an element of the representation of the ideal with uh, uh, any representation, you get a representation in the ideal. So this is really close to the notion of an ideal for a brain. And uh, uh, with uh, this notion, you, you can define what is a trace on an ideal. So a modified trace on the ideal pi is a fine family of linear form, so I will uh, say what is the linear trace for, of, the, of an homomorphism of an object of I. And it should satisfy some uh, properties, so first the, the property of commutativity of a trace, the trace of AG is equal to the trace of GF, for any maps between eventually different objects in the category. So this means, uh, this axiom relies the, the trace between the different uh, the different linear form, in fact, it gives a relation between the trace on U and the trace on V. And second, the, the modified trace on the partial trace is compatible with the partial trace. Maybe a better name would have been a Markov trace for this trace. So the, the second property is the following. You have an endomorphism of H of U tensor W. So here U is in the IDO, but not necessarily to the view. But as the IDO is absorbing for the tensor product, the tensor product U tensor W is in the IDO. So I can consider the modified trace of this. And this is equal by subtraction to the modified trace of the partial trace of H. So partial trace well, is the same notion that you can uh, use for a linear map between the tensor products. So you, you, you only trace on one side. So example, the, in general, in ribbon category, you can have uh, 
a decreasing sequence of IDO. And uh, in fact, for, the, for SL2, it would be a very easy example where you only have a, a sequence of, uh, in two steps, you have the full category, the ideal projective, and the, the zero ideal. So in fact, in general, in the relevant category, the, the smallest ideal is uh, the, the subcategory of projective. Satisfy this property. The sum of a projective is projective. And if you transfer a projective by any object, you get some uh, projective object. And if C is semi-simple, there is no non-trivial ideal. So semi-simple category are uh, the equivalent of field for on this point of view. Okay, so the, the, we have this theorem uh, for the category of weight representation of your QSL2. It's that uh, there exists on the ideal of projective a unique up to a global scalar modified trace on it. So we know that the characteristic trace is zero on the projective, on the morphism of any projective, and the, there exists a unique non-zero modified trace on it, up to a global scalar. But if you multiply globally uh, modified trace by a scalar, it still gets a modified trace. Okay, then we can say that uh, C colored links is admissible if it has at least one color which is a projective object. So when you have a links, the, the components are colored by modules, and I ask that at least one of the modules is a projective object in the category. So the graphical uh, equivalent of the modified trace is the invariant f prime written here. So if we have a closed graph or a closed link uh, which is admissible, what we do is we cut it on a strong color by a projective object, then we get an endomorphism of the projective object, and we take the modified trace of this endomorphism, and the theorem is that it only depends of the closed graph and not of where you cut. It does not depend where you cut. And it's immediate that you can immediately see that F prime extends the Akutsu Bekuchi Otsuki colored Alexander invariance of link in S3 that you work over if you color the, the component of the link by the simple module V alpha, where alpha is a complex number. Okay, so I give a very fast old idea of the, of the proof. So the first point is that the property of the trace, the, the fact that the modified trace of FG is equal to the modified trace of GF, and the fact that it is uh, like a Markov trace, you can close, uh, you can partially close a, a, a tangle say that in fact if you have two uh, if you it's equivalent to say that if you have two closed graph and you cut at two different places then the modified trace of the obtained endomorphism should be the same. So this is what we what I want to, to explain rapidly why it's true. The proof is based on the notion of ambidextrous object. We show that the the module V alpha or the cache IF module as the ambidextrous property. The ambidextrous property is this property. When you have um, an endomorphism of the tensor product of the Kashaev module with itself, then you can trace it on the left or on the right, 
And in both cases, you get the same endomorphism of uh, the module. Once you have proved this, then it means that uh, if you have uh, the, the diagram of a link, where you have two edge colored by V0, V alpha, you, you want to, uh, to cut at one place, you get more an endomorphism of V alpha. You cut at the other place, you get another endomorphism of V alpha. But you can also cut at both places, and then you get an endomorphism of V alpha tensor V alpha. And now the ambidex proof property is saying that you, if you glue back one strand or the other, you get the same endomorphism. So this is how we prove that uh, cutting uh, an edge colored by V alpha does not depend on the edge where you cut. And the second step to define the trace on all the category of projective is to say that any projective can be realized as a sum of V alpha tensor something. So if we have a graph where somewhere, some place we have a strong color by a projective P, what we do is we first uh, use a kind of scan relation. In fact, we say that the graphical calculus says that the identity of P is equal to some graph where you factor through V alpha tensor W. So this inequality is an inequality at the level of the uh, rustic interior functor. And because of this equality, it means that you can apply this kind of scale relation. You can make appear the V alpha color any, any place where you have a projective color. And then you, you, are, you have a, a graph where you have a color of V alpha. And you know you can cut on this. Uh, on this edge to, to define the to define an environment and to define the trace. So this is the way you prove the, prove the trace exists and is unique. Okay, so next step now I would like to say how you can construct a three manifold environment using this uh, this modified trace. So this is a is a one slide sketch of the uh, rustic interior construction of three manifold invariant, so uh, it's not, I can't be very precise. So, first, uh, you have a Likorich Wallace theorem that says that any oriented closed three manifold can be obtained by surgery on the link in S3. So, you, you have S3 and you can remove a tubular label of the link, and then this is diffeomorphic to uh, any the, the three manifold you want to obtain. Where you have, uh, where, if, where you have removed the uh, label, tubular label of a dual link L tilde, which is a link in M. <coughs> then uh, Kirby theorem says that any two surgery representation of M for, for the same manifold M are related by a second of Kirby one and Kirby two move. So I just wrote here the Kirby move, the Kirby 1 move is a stabilization. So the Kirby 2 move is you have your link uh, that represents your manifold and uh, the move you do is you replace one strand by the connected sum of the strand with a parallel copy of one surgery component. Now if you have a modular category, so this is theory of fresh sticking to IF, in the modular category, which is semi-simple with finitely many simple objects and some non-generacy condition and ribbon, then you can uh, consider this color, which is a combination, linear, formal linear combination of representation, and you can consider the link invariant where you color the component of L by this uh, representation, and the number you get is uh, Invariant by Kirby to move. So after you just have to renormalize it to be invariant by Kirby one move, and you do this using the signature of the uh, linking matrix, and you get uh, an invariant of three manifold, which is a written into IF invariant of three manifold. So this is a process usually. So how do you get the, the modular category? 
in the case of uh, the category of representation of SL2. In fact, you have the category C we have seen. Inside, you have the subcategory of projective. And the modular category is what you get when you quotient the category by the negligible, which are the projective. So, the modular category is essentially C, or at least maybe a subcategory which is uh, near to be C, quotiented by the projective. So, here we have a modular category that gives you the return of the to IF. And what we are doing here, we are, we are going to do the same, uh, a similar construction, but using the representation that are here. This is like an exact, an exact sequence of category. Okay, so to define the environment, in fact, we can't uh, use uh, any manifold. We, we, because we have too many representations, we have to choose the representation. So to choose the representation we are going to use, we use the cohomology class in the complement of the of the tangle or the graph in the manifold M. That can be seen as the monodromy of a, a flat C-tangle. And uh, we ask the compatibility between the coloring of the graph or the link and the cohomology class. So the, the compatibility is the following. You, you, the, uh, the cohomology class, I see it as a monodromy. So it, it can give you a complex number for each loop in your three manifold. You can associate a complex number. In particular, when you have your ribbon graph, you can loop look at the value on the meridian. And it gives you a complex number for each meridian of the ribbon graph. And what I ask is that the... So if I have my, uh, my ribbon graph here, it is colored by the representation V that belongs to the category. And in fact, it belongs to some homogeneous part of the category. So it has a degree. And the meridian of the age has a value by the homology class. And I ask that the degree of the representation is the same as the monodromy of the meridian. This is a compatibility relation we ask. So in some sense, the C coloring of the graph lifts the monodromy of uh, omega. Okay, so similarly, I say if L is a surgery representation of my manifold, so if I represent my manifold by a link, a surgery on the link in S3, the component of the surgery link also have meridian that have a degree. And in fact, I will use this degree to choose uh, the representation I'm, I'm going to put on this surgery link. Okay, so for now, there is a technical point is that the environment is not defined on all admit on all uh, uh, triple. The triple should be admissible. So admissible means that either the cohomology class is not totally integral, there is it takes a non-integral value on some loops, either there is a projective color in T. So it's the same that for the link invariant F prime. For the link invariant F prime to be defined, you need to be able to cut, and to cut, you need to have a projective modules. And here, to define the environment of three manifold, we need either that there is a projective module somewhere either that the cohomology class has a complex value, an integral complex value. So for example, if uh, you have a link in uh, any manifold M, but it is, the link is nul homologous, then you can see that the, the homology of the complement of the link splits at uh, the homology of the manifold plus the meridian, the free, the free the free group generated by the meridian. And then, uh, if you color the link by a complex number, then there is a unique extension taking the zero uh, on, the, on the part of the homology of the manifold. 
And so there is a canonical uh, way to have a, a, a homology class uh, associated to this C-color link. And this is, for me, the natural extension of the uh, ADO invariant. For, if you have the ADO invariant in S3, then all links are uh, new homologous. And so there is a canonical uh, homology class that you can that you can associate to this uh, C-colored link and uh, the ADO invariant of the link is equal, will be equal to uh, the invariant I'm going to define for the triple S3, T and the canonical commodity class. Okay, next, the surgery plantation is computable if no component of L has degree in plus or minus one. So it means that every time uh, I have a surgery component, the monodromy around the surgery component is not an integral, or is not uh, plus or minus one in this term. So here I have used several times the reason the isomorphism between the system and the sigma positive. That is given by the expansion map here. So now the uh, uh, proposition is that every omega admissible decorated manifold, so omega admissible means that the cohomology class takes a non-integral value. It has a computable surgery representation. And so what we do is that for this uh, surgery representation, we are going to color any component of the surgery link by a Kirby color of uh, the same degree. And by definition, a Kirby color of the same degree is this, this uh, formal sum of uh, uh, module, simple, the simple module uh, that uh, uh, defines the ADO invariant uh, with some, uh, with some uh, weight, D of beta, which is the modified dimension of the, of the associated module. And the theorem we prove is that uh, this is a well-defined uh, invariant. So we have to renormalize as in the Wittgenstein to uh, Wittgenstein to F case by some uh, uh, some f uh, weak factor to to, to to pass the problem of uh, invariance by Kirby one move. So it's a kind of a normalization, and then we get a three manifold invariant for uh, an admissible trick. I give an example uh, which is the level of zero. I say it was a Bayern remaster torsion. So, this is to show that at least in some case we can compute here for the, the case L equals 2, we were able to, to compute for all length spaces the, the value of the invariant. And uh, this is remarkable because the invariant distinguishes all the length spaces. So, it's, uh, it shows that this invariant is. Uh, it's not trivial, it distinguishes all the length spaces. And it will be noticed that uh, for the same level, the written Rechtig into uh, the written Rechtig into IF invariant is uh, completely trivial, it distinguishes nothing. So we are for the same level, at first root of unity, in fact, the, the invariant here distinguishes all length spaces. So I, here I, I give a rapid uh, ingredients of the proof for the uh, three manifold, the, the invariants of the three manifold invariants. So there are some algebraic ingredients and topological ingredients. Algebraic ingredients is what you need to prove the invariants by Kirby two moves. So what we use is several things. First, the modified trace gives you a non-degenerate pairing between morphism. So you. Have morphism say from U to V, uh, the set of morphism from U to V will be dual to the set of morphism from V to U. 
if you want via projective using the, the modified trace. You compose the two morphism and you compute the modified trace. It gives you a pairing, and this pairing is non-degenerate. After, for generic alpha bar, we have um, uh, this category is semi-simple. So with these two ingredients, you can uh, you can do some uh, uh, calculus that uh, people were used to uh, in the uh, semi-simple uh, theory, which is that you can do the fusion, the fusion of two strings, two color strings. After another important ingredient is that the category uh, C0 contains a group, in fact, so sigma k. Sigma k is a one-dimensional module. So it's isomorphic as a C vector space to C. So when you tensor C with C, you keep having C. And uh, these, uh, these modules, they give some kind of periodicity in the category. So in the category, you have too many simple. If you look in alpha bar, you have infinitely many simple. But up to tensoring by this sigma k, in fact, you have only infinitely many of them. And they all appear in the Kirby color. Okay, so this group, it's uh, more generally, it should be the, it looks like the group of invertible objects for the tensor product. And after you have topology color ingredients. So the, the Kirby theorem uh, for social representation of decorated manifolds, you can adapt the Kirby theorem to follow the cohomology class when you do handle slide, when you do Kirby two modes. And uh, uh, you can encode any self diophomorphism on them by a sequence of Kirby moves. And after, uh, we need a Kirby theorem for computable social representation. But it's not true. In fact, we, we have, uh, you can think of all social representation of a manifold as a big graph, where the Kirby move are edges. And in all these uh, social representation, we have removed some that we say were not computable. Removing this, uh, removing this uh, presentation, we have made this graph disconnected. So it, we need something more to prove that you can compute any place and it will give the same invariant. And what you need, in fact, is uh, add some uh, some morph that change the three manifold, but it doesn't change the invariant. Doing this, we are able to connect any two computable representation through good computable representation. Okay, so I, I will have to be very fast for the last point. So, in the in the semi-simple case, there was a, a definition of the TQFT by Blanchet, uh, Abegger, Masbon, Vogel that was uh, an universal construction of the TQFT. So what is this universal construction? You take your preferred three manifold invariant or closed three manifold, and uh, first you, you extend it multiplicatively for disjoint union of manifold. The, the invariant of the disjoint union is the product of the invariant. After you say uh, I you define the two plus one cobordism category with object will be surface and morphism cobordism, and the close and you. Choose this category so that the, the closed three manifold, that are the cobordism from empty surface to the empty surface, are disjoint union of admissible decorated manifold. And after you say uh, the vector space I'm going to consider is the set of the vector space generated by formally generated by all morphism, all uh, bordism from the empty surface to sigma, and the dual vector space will be the set of all uh, bordism from sigma to the empty surface. And after I have a pairing of these two vector space, these two infinite huge vector space, infinite dimensional vector space, I have a pairing which is just, if you have a bordism from empty to sigma and a bordism from sigma to empty, you glue them and you compute the three manifold invariant. So this is a, a pairing, you extend this linearly, and then you do, I just uh, take the vector space, which is this infinite dimensional vector space, quotiented by the kernel of this pair. And this is almost a TQFT for free. So what does it mean? It means it will associate to any surface a vector space, 
to any bordism, it will give a linear map between two surfaces. It's, a, it's functorial. If you glue cobordism, you will get a composition of the linear maps. And you get for free that is laxed monoidal. So it's not completely monoidal, but you, can, you have a map from the, the image of the tensor uh, product of the two surfaces and the image of the Zerbi-Zuant union. So the difficult part when you do this universal construction is to show that uh, these vector spaces are finite dimensional and uh, to show that you have, in fact, the, the true monoidality. And uh, so the nice point with this construction is that you, you don't have to guess what is your TQFT. You just do the, do the process and you discover what you get. And in fact, what we discovered is that it was not something that. So in fact, we have to make a modification of this uh, construction. And uh, these modifications, uh, the definition of the monoidal functor is essentially use, use uh, the set, the previous uh, construction, but you adjoint to each surface a little sphere, and you look manifold that are body, bonding not only the surface, but the surface union this little sphere and on this sphere there is uh, the end of a tangle which is colored by these, um, these modules in my special module. Okay, so before I describe a little more what are the objects in the, in the cobordism category, so the, the objects are the surface that you get when you cut a, a decorated manifold. So mm -hmm. when you cut a decorated manifold along the surface in generic position, then you, you see the, the, the trace of the, the restriction of the cohomology class. You see the end, where you, when you cut a tangle, you see end points of tangles that are point with framing, with uh, coloring, C coloring. Uh, we, we have to put some, uh, for technical reason, we have to put some uh, base point on each component uh, of the surface and uh, the commodity class are relative to this base point. And uh, like in the written uh, in 3 f uh, TQFT, there is a, a, an anomaly here and uh, we, to fix the anomaly you, we have to consider some Lagrangian on the surface, some uh, Lagrangian in the, in the real uh, Okay, and last thing is that uh, the CQFT has uh, an aspect which is uh, 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 has something strange that when you cut uh, the, uh, an admissible manifold, so I recall that to be admissible you need at least to have a color on the tangle which is in P, which is in projective, either to have uh, value of the commodity class, which is a complex number, which is non-integral. But when you cut a manifold, you may have one of the two pieces, which is not like this. And uh, uh, because of this, we have to, to, to disymmetrize the category. And the way we do this is that we say that uh, we only consider cobordism, for which the components that are not connected to the uh, source surface, sigma 1, should be admissible. So they should have something inside which is either projective, either complex. Okay, and the final theorem is that. See this here? Yeah. But the value of the invariant are the same in this case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, why, what the, the structure of the formula, how it uh, reflects this invariance? 
sorry, I don't I think I don't understand. It's, uh, when if, if you so L P Q can be isomorphic to L P prime. P prime P. Q prime should be. Um, yeah, we can be shifted by multiple uh, P, right? You must yeah. Have to, you must do another omega for comparing these two. Ah, ah yeah. Well, um, so yeah, you you it, the, the computation depends on uh, on K, but in fact you can look not at one invariant, but you can look at the collection of all invariants for all the cohomology class. And then you see that uh, to be, if the manifolds are diffeomorphic, then this collection of all invariants will be the same. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, wonder, I wonder how the, your formula... Uh, how we compute this? No, no, how, how the formula takes into account this, all these invariants. I mean, uh, I've never seen this, uh, this combination for The formula is here. The yeah, formula. Yeah. <laughs> and what I say is that we. Yeah, because ah. we, besides of this equivalence, there is one more, right? So p times p prime. So yeah. I, I don't remember exactly what. So p should be the same, yeah. and q prime should q be prime. equal. I, I don't. Maybe it's q plus or minus q. I don't remember. Sorry. Uh, um, inverse. Or maybe, mod maybe q inverse. I don't. Remember. Inverse mod p. Sorry. Inverse mod p. Q and inverse. Yes. Okay. And I wonder how one, uh, one sees this, uh, this invariance. Well, uh, <laughs> if you replace Q by Q inverse and K by KQ, uh -huh. then you're just going to change the terms. It's invariant. Oh, okay. You have to change K, of course. Yeah, yeah. You have to it's, it's a covariant. So if you change Q to Q inverse mod P and K to KQ, then you get the, the, exactly the same thing. It, it's completely okay. I know this from Dedekind sums, it's the same trick. <laughs> you can't write it symmetrically, but it is symmetric. Yeah. Okay, so I th in fact I think K is a, is a... What is K here for the cohomology class? You can write your length space as a long up link like this. Several, connected sum of several up link. Well, maybe there's a better way to say it. The length space doesn't really depend on L and P and Q. It depends on P and Q1 and Q2, where the P through the unity acts by zeta to Q1, zeta to Q2. Then trivially, it only depends on Q1 over Q2 mod P. But it naturally has two indices, but it's scalar invariant. So there should be Q1 uh, simply pi Q1 over P pi Q2 over P, and then it's obviously symmetric and polygonal and everything else. But it, it's just written asymmetrically. It's, so, so this does have exactly the same invariance as the lens space. And this lens space are always written asymmetrically. Pick one zeta and then zeta to the q. It should be zeta to the q one zeta to the q two, and it only depends on the ratio. Then this thing would be visibly symmetric. But it's, the way it's written, it isn't. And in the theory representation, I think it's just that you can turn the, the picture. You don't need a picture. This is only in high school. Thanks for your help.